Hey guys, what follows is going to be a review for Warcraft 3 as I've had a chance to get hands-on with this brand new RTS RPG game. I've spent about 20 hours so far with Warcraft 3 and I want to share with you my thoughts so that you can decide if you think the game is going to be worth your while. At the end, I'll give you my grub score and you can decide if you want to like or dislike the video or sub or unsub based on your enjoyment of this review or lack thereof so far. So, let's begin. In a world of fantasy and magic, where kingdoms rise and fall, a disturbing and ancient power stirs the land, and the people of Azeroth and beyond must prepare to withstand the Burning Legion and not tear itself apart in the process. And from the studio that brought you the legendary StarCraft Brood War comes a new epic adventure in the Warcraft series that will take you on a journey like no other. Combining classic real-time strategy gameplay elements with an RPG twist, set in the fictional world of Azeroth, you take control of one of four unique races, each with their own heroes and a large variety of different units. Play through the rich storylines in multiple campaigns with unique missions and compelling narratives. You'll make difficult decisions as you decide what kind of ruler you set out to be. You'll level up your heroes and acquire new and powerful abilities. And you'll send out your forces and your armies to take out your foes. Prepare for the deep and engaging gameplay that Blizzard is known to offer in the all new world of Warcraft 3. I've gotten my hands on Warcraft 3 on day one of release and I'm excited to share my review of this game so far and give you my grub score after 20 hours of play so you can decide if it's going to be worth your time and the hefty price tag of $59. $99. Warcraft 3 is a fantasy game set in the world of Azeroth and you play as one of the four races, namely humans, uh, orcs, night elves and undead. Each faction has its own campaign series that further the storyline and are meant to be played in a particular sequence with about eight missions per faction. Without wanting to share spoilers of the story as I'm sure if you end up getting the game you'll be wanting to experience it for yourself, the events that unfurl are gripping and present the player with moral dilemmas, uh, tough setbacks and hard-fought triumphs. Outside of the campaigns, players can choose to engage in custom skirmishes against the AI or go on Blizzard's Battle.net, their online destination for multiplayer games. There is a separately launchable world editor where you may find some use for it as it allows users to create new uh, ways to use the existing game assets uh, to create levels for one another. It seems fairly powerful, who knows what people may come up with given the time and energy that they could be putting into it, as we've already seen with the custom game scene in StarCraft Brood War. Let's talk about the graphics. Warcraft 3 follows a cartoonish art style that is more surrealistic and less realistic, with unlikely proportions at times. At first look, it can be hard to tell what's going on sometimes, but with more hours into the game, I started to appreciate that the game does a very good job of being readable with all the different battle effects and spells that can be used by players. There's a pleasing aesthetic to the look of the world and a cohesive palette of the world is being portrayed to us at all times. While not being groundbreaking visually compared to beautiful games like for instance, Splinter Cells uh, right from to Tom Clancy, which has state-of-the-art right lighting effects. You have the right to freedom from what? Warcraft 3 nonetheless does its job well at creating a beautiful aesthetic visually that remains well readable. Much of the story is rendered via in-game cutscenes like this one. And this does the job of furthering the story very well. The most impressive part of the visual experience is on the cinematic front. In this, Blizzard has outdone themselves once again. The cinematics are drop dead gorgeous and emotionally demand your investment. They are scattered and spread throughout the campaign after certain missions as rewards for completing them. The sound and music for Warcraft 3 is composed by Tracy W. Bush. Derek Duke, Jason Hayes, Victor Cruz and Glenn Stafford, who we of course also know from his stellar work on StarCraft Brood War. Every faction is accompanied 
by themed music. We're listening to the serenade of night elf music uh, right now, in fact, that sets the atmosphere for the identity of their peoples. For example, the mysterious and trance-like music and tunes of the Night Elf Sentinel faction are accompanied by instrumentals like soft drums and violins. It nonetheless morphs sometimes into the more enrapturous call to action music in the track called the Night Elf's Song. The music sets an excellent undertone to the action, though I must comment there is a fairly large decibel volume difference in the loudest and the least loud parts of the original soundtrack which at times can make it difficult to balance the music volume slider appropriately in relation to the sound effects slider. On topic of the sound effects, they are fantastic and funny. From the myriad voice lines of the in-game characters to the multitude of death sounds, attack sounds and the general clamor of battle. From the witch doctor excitedly shouting Wah! when he's performing an attack to the pitiful peon's death sound. Wah! when he falls in battle, Warcraft 3 has a gorgeous audio landscape. Let's talk about the gameplay. The campaign and single player missions offer many hours of captivating gameplay. We've seen the beginnings of competitions in the electronic sports that has started to emerge around the world in South Korea and beyond via Warcraft 3's existing sister game, Starcraft Brood War. And I believe that people can have a lot of fun with Warcraft 3 in multiplayer in that regard. While the game pace felt a little high for me at times, as I max out at 50 actions per minute and I don't have any hotkeys in my mastery yet, given time I may dare say that I will attempt to play more multiplayer and I believe the game is fairly well suited for it. Hopefully Warcraft 3 will get its place in the world cyber games along industry leaders Age of Empires 2, Starcraft Brood War and Unreal Tournament. As far as the user interface is concerned, there's a wide array of available hotkeys available for those that are looking to improve and streamline their gameplay. Most of these, if not all, are customizable via an edit text file in the root Warcraft 3 folder. It would be nicer to be able to edit your hotkeys via the in-game menu and the in-game interface, as editing the text file can be confusing for people to navigate towards for the vast majority of players. Inside the game, there are other options that allow for audio balancing, scroll speed and graphical adjustments. The interface on Battle.net, the multiplayer server for Warcraft 3, catapults you into the news section, where you see regular updates for new patches and so on. With one click, you can enter a chat room that's tied to your regionality. You can change channels then manually or change your computer's region to have a different default channel to be launched into. While I entered these chat channels to seek strategical discussions, as with most online unmoderated chat rooms, things quickly devolved into baseless and unprovoked name calling and slurs. Bugs and technical issues. Of these, I have not found many, if any. As is the norm with Blizzard, they don't release a game until they declare it to be well and truly ready, often even canning projects that they do not perceive are up to their standard of when it's ready. Their reputation continues to hold true, as I imagine it always will. Warcraft 3 is well polished and well made. Warcraft 3 is innovative. It innovates upon the RTS genre with strong competition among other RTS games like Age of Mythology, Rise of Nations, Command and Conquer Generals, and soon on the horizon, Warhammer 40k Dawn of War, Rome Total War coming up soon. By adding RPG elements to the RTS, Blizzard may have unearthed and developed a new niche in the market for players that like to play with units that are more powerful as they survive more battles. With the hero leveling system, there is a ripe recipe for new ways to enjoy the tried and true popular genre of real-time strategy. Perhaps the presence of these well-fleshed out heroes may even lead to new extra innovations via the world editor? Time will tell. When it comes to the multiplayer and the replayability of the game after finishing campaigns and single player missions, initially I found myself quickly rashed out of existence by other players when playing on Battle.net. But after several lickings and beatings, I actually managed to achieve my very first online victory. Multiplayer is a fun and challenging experience that I could see myself delving more into given time. After looking up some day one strategy advice and build orders on popular community sites and forums, 
I managed to perform a Dreadlord Frost Worm Rush and I got myself that sweet victory screen. I could get used to that. All in all, Warcraft 3 is a complete and fantastic game that I could recommend to anybody in love with either the RTS or the RPG genre. The Grub score is going to be a resounding 9.6 out of 10. If you enjoyed this review, sub to the Grub for more gaming news, reviews and playthroughs. Perhaps in the future even some Warcraft 3 gameplay. And what do you think? Do you think you're going to be buying Warcraft 3? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.